independent school leaders have an incredible opportunity to be some of the most cutting edge schools in the country. And so I think the reason I'm here is I want more and more independent schools to think about whether the traditional model is really preparing their students for the challenges of the 21st century. Once they decide what those outcomes are, are they critical thinking, communication, collaboration, creativity, global competence, I think the learning sciences can help us figure out the, the best ways to teach and assess those. So I'm very excited to have better conversations going between school leaders who are carve, uh, you know, sort of um, pioneering the way to new models and learning science experts who can tell them the best ways to teach those new uh, 21st century skills. I think that I, if everyone could take away this stigma, right, so this destigmatizing of kids with learning difficulties or learning differences or learning disabilities um, and really see them as assets rather than deficits. Um, because what we know is that kids who have learning differences or any kind of learning challenges also tend to think outside of the box and tend to be very creative. And so we need to see those as assets and opportunities also for teachers um, to be able to um, change, their, change their teaching repertoire. I think one of the really important messages for educators is the critical uh, central role of human development in education. We tend to get caught up in learning and learning outcomes uh, as, as if they were something separate from developing the person themselves and the things that they're capable of and the, uh, the things that, uh, that they kind of encompass with their own uh, uh, self, both bodily, physical, and also mental and emotional and spiritual. I think it's really important that we understand that what we're really doing is supporting the growth and development of people. Uh, and that the things that we're exposing them to and the skills that we're expecting of them and uh, the knowledge that we're asking them to construct is a piece is going to become a piece of who they are. Um, and that we need to understand that learning is not sort of divorced from the center of who that person is, but instead is informing the kind of person that they can become and the ways in which they can think and understand the world. Uh, and so we really need to think about education, I think, as a kind of almost specialized uh, child rearing, where we're really thinking about how are we supporting the development of the individual in domain specific ways and also in uh, broader ways that allow them to navigate their life as an individual. Well, I'd like to, for them to understand first the deep importance of why this change is so required. When you look at the progress of artificial intelligence and robotics and synthetic biology and so on, you realize that we're going to be facing enormous changes, not just from an employability perspective, but also societally. We're being challenged to redefine what it means to be human. And that's going to continue for this century at, a, at an exponential pace. And I don't think we have the wisdom in place yet to understand what that means. If cloning of humans becomes possible, should we be doing it in the first place? If artificial intelligence can really upend all sorts of jobs, should we be doing that without some form of safety net for everyone? And on and on. So there are plenty of uh, really rattling challenges we're facing, uh, probably larger in magnitude than what the world faced with the Industrial Revolution. And of course, those were very jarring changes at the time that forced the population to go from agrarian economies to industrial economies. And now we're seeing this shift from industrial economies to knowledge and creativity. And that's, of course, going to require an upscaling of all of us. The real issue is, shouldn't independent schools be trying to carve out the new set of metrics that would determine whether or not their kids are really ready for 21st century life and work? Somebody here said earlier, I really, you know, we should stop, drop the term 21st century education because we're 15 years into it. My question would be, can you look in the mirror as an independent school leader and determine whether your kids are really ready for the challenges of 21st century life and work? If they are, drop the term 21st century and call it education. If they're not, then keep working on your model until you really believe that you're preparing kids for the challenges of 21st century life. But in between, we're in a transition and we're using the term 21st century education to simply describe that transition to a new model that would get kids really ready for the life that faces them when they leave education. 
I think one of the most important things to think about when we think about the science of learning is to think about the kinds of myths that come along with the culture of education, whether those are myths around the neuroscience of education, um, so whether they're neuro myths or behavior myths, both of them abound, and it really matters what parents and educators actually know about the science of learning. So when misconceptions are, um, are distributed and when people don't have a chance to update their information to be educated about the science of learning, the children that we work with are at a real risk of being misunderstood. And if a child is misunderstood, then we don't have the resources to effectively support them, help them, and, uh, and develop their reading skills further. In the same way that we've destigmatized um, learning disabilities, also to really demystify for teachers some of the concrete practices. So in my presentation, I sort of talked about some specific ways. And so just to sort of have that conversation going that we've destigmatized, but we haven't necessarily demystified what it means to really help teachers. There is so much research being done right now across education and so much new technology. And the metrics of education are, are historically pretty terrible that that you know we're 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 grasping around for really good neuroscience research that's starting to come out um, how do you take that and translate it into practice and that effort that conversation is an incredibly exciting one that we should be joining actively um, but not presume to either have an answer right now or expect an answer anytime real soon